Well, I've been waiting all day to get out of the office. I started hearing some birds outside. My eyes were getting tired of that screen, and I decided it was time to take a nature break. So, thing is, I looked up on the weather report, and we might have a storm rolling our way, get some rain in here or something, so I don't want to get too far away since we're going to be filming. The honey creepers are one of the most vibrant members of the tanager family, and here in the New World, there are four species. So Jim grabbed the wrong book. There are actually six species of honey creepers three of which we can see right here on Isla Bastimentos. So normally these species live high in the top of the forest canopy, uh, sallying for flying insects and, and uh, getting nectar from flowers and also foraging under leaves and, and vine mass for arthropods and such and other types of insects. Um, but anyways, at this time of year, when these melastoma bushes are in fruit, uh, they come down out of the canopy and they get into these trees and they're only like 20 feet tall so you can get really good eye level shots um, on uh, both video and photographs and it's, it's, a, it's the best opportunity of the year to, to get some really good pictures of these colorful birds. So um, let's go over there and pick a nice spot right next to those melastoma trees and see what we can't, what we can't capture. I'll never forget the first honey creeper I saw 20 something years ago. The image stays with me to this day, as vibrant as the day it happened. It's one of those special moments in time that my mind recalls often, the excitement of the unknown. I had no idea what I'd seen that day, so I gave it a name that I couldn't forget, Bluest of the Blue. My kids still call it that to this day. Turns out I wasn't far off from its scientific name, Cyanerpes lucidus. Cyan, from the ancient Greek meaning dark blue, and erpes meaning creeper. Lucidus from the Latin meaning light and bright. So what we got here is a dark blue creeping bright light. Somebody got that name right. In nature, many females of the bird world are less adorned than their male counterparts. But these females are gorgeous on their own terms. Just look at that beautiful buffy breast and throat, those streaks of deep blue sky, turquoise head, and the electric green back. I just love how they're so inquisitive. Male green honey creepers are readily identified with their mostly bright green to aqua plumage and their ultra suave black hoods while females are distinguished by full emerald green plumage and their long, decurved, mostly yellow bill. They are often found in mixed flocks with other honey creepers and tanagers. When I was a kid, my favorite go-to color in that big box of crayons was called aquamarine. Well, I'm pretty sure that this is where they got that color. As the rain came in, it brought with it a blue darkness. A tanager closely related to the honey creepers, who also joined in on the mixed flock feeding. They have to wonder who's the bluest. I mean, not that it's a competition, but come on, who wouldn't want to know? The female blue darkness, as most of the other female tanagers in this collection, is a real stunner. The combination of mostly green body and sky blue head is distinctive. Also of note are her beautiful pinkish legs. The male's mostly blue plumage with black patches on the throat and back make this combination unique for field identification. It seemed that the rain never bothered the birds at all, as if they were happy to be both eating and bathing at the same time. I wonder if they refer to it as killing two birds with one stone. Then again, maybe not. Eventually, I made my way under the roof of a nearby building to avoid the elements and keep enjoying all the action. But the birds, they never seemed to mind the rain and continued about their important business of getting while the getting's good. And who can blame them? 
Well, we never did find that red-legged honey creeper. I guess he'll just have to wait until the next adventure. Thank you so much for joining us. And don't forget that by subscribing and sharing with friends, you're helping to bring awareness and protection to the natural world of Bocas del Toro, Panama.